Hi everybody. This is a little bit late due to the fact it's May and this is actually April's Q&A. Sorry it's taken a while. Um, we're a little bit behind. Anyway, so here we go. Okay, so we've had some good questions this month or last month. Um, the first one is from Natural Sheffy. And the question is, what the simple, what's the best simple explanation I can offer people for why it is better to have less refined sugar? Well, the simplest explanation is because it uh, keeps your blood sugar levels stable. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, so if you have less refined sugar, your blood, le blood sugar levels re remain stable, which means your energy should be more stable throughout the day, more consistent. Um, that's because you aren't giving your body like a, a sugar hit which causes an insulin spike which in turn causes an, a drop in energy you know you have a, a dip so your energy levels are going up and down all over the place so that's the, ba that's the basic uh, that's the best most simple reason I'd say um, it is also you know it's just exhausting for the body if it's going up and down up and down all the time and also it doesn't help you because you start thinking that you're, you know, because when you have a sugar low, then you're going to reach for the sugar because you're going to be like, oh, I'm tired. And so then you reach for the sugar and it's self-perpetuating. You see, it's a vicious circle. So that's the best way, that's the best reason. That's the best explanation. Low, less refined sugar means more stable energies. Um, okay, next one from Beautifully Chiswick. Any tips for her to her help shrinking fibroids? If it's possible through diet, also foods to ease menopause, and what would help after a hysterectomy? Okay, so things for fibroids, things that you want to try and reduce inflammation, so all the usual suspects, lower uh, alcohol, lower caffeine, um, sugar, refined sugars, meats, refined carbs, um, you want to try and reduce stress a bit as well. Um, um, for menopause, you want to try and avoid estrogenic foods, uh, you know, not estrogenic foods, things like plastic, drink out of plastic bottles, um, plastic containers, anything with xenoestrogens in them, you want to try and avoid those pollutants. Um, things you do want to do, you want to try and increase um, organic food, eat more whole grains, eat fresh food. The thing is, if you eat plant, um, lots of veg, they have something called plant sterols in them, and they will help your hormone balances um, afterwards. Also, uh, what else was I thinking? Oh, good oils, so things like flaxseed oil would be really good for you here because that's anti-inflammatory, it helps keep the body in a good, um, the immune system in a good balance. And more fish oils would be really good. Uh, but eating primrose oil is really nice as well. So, <laughs> so I hope that helps you. Um, and, uh, okay, and then the next person is Hamelinda Bell. Um, what's your view on fasting and reduced calories? Many people swear by 5-2 and 5-3 plan where they restrict the calorie intake two to three pet days per week. Um, I get asked this a lot and it's a very popular plan and it, people f seem to find it doable. I have The only issue I have with it is that people often eat terribly the rest of the day. So they, they sort of have five, six hundred calories a day and then when they're on their, you know, on their two or three days. And then the other days they eat burgers and drink beer. It doesn't, that is just to me not, it's not a healthy way. It's basically like a, a sort of form of bulimia, like you're, you're purging for three days and then you're, you're um, binging for the other four days or all five or two. So the thing is, it does really work. And it's really, my view on fasting and reduced calories is that it rests your body. If you're doing it um, as a way of, uh, you know, restricting calories to, to starve yourself and it's not going to work. The reason it works is because by reducing those calories for those two or three days a week, you're giving your body a chance to clean itself out, get rid of any toxins, you're giving the digestion a rest, you can repair other bits, your liver can get a little bit more um, efficient, so then you digest food, for, you know, it all helps the body to work better, which is why you will feel better and if you need to lose weight, you will, as a byproduct, lose weight. But that only works if you're going to eat properly the other five days of the week. If you're going to eat trash those days, then you're not really going to feel the benefits. You're going to be on a bit, it's basically like doing a weekly yo-yo diet. So if I haven't said that strongly enough, you really need to make sure that you eat properly the five days so that the rest of the time, and then you will feel better. And fasting is the same. Fasting, if you are fasting to lose weight, then you have got it wrong because you won't lose weight because you, you lose weight while you fast. 
And then of course you're gonna put the weight back on, you're empty. But I tell you what you will do is you will get brain clarity, you will feel better, your energy levels will be better. But if you're doing it for weight loss, you're backing the wrong horse.